Apple's iPhone 11 Pro and Pro Max were introduced with the largest battery capacities in any iPhone yet, with the promise of hours more battery life than their predecessors. But what does that mean when it comes time to charge these battery behemoths? Battery life is in constant discussion regarding our mobile devices and the indefinite need for them to last throughout whatever tasks we require of them, largely in perpetually active state, serving as our connection to the world. In our day-to-day -day motions, we sometimes forget how much we rely on these devices, and we expect them to last at least as long to serve their purpose. Of course, with more intensive usage over hours and hours, this isn't always the case. So we find ourselves searching for a place to plug in to maintain our connection. Today, we're going to explore the best options and how long it actually takes to charge up the iPhone 11 Pro, using these various charging solutions at our disposal. Last year, I made a similar set of videos for the iPhone XS that I'll link in this video's description. As I covered when unboxing the iPhone 11 Pro Max, the latest iPhones now include an 18-watt charging adapter in the box, which is quite the upgrade from the stunted 5-watt adapter with previous models. The benefit of this is the fast charging capability iPhones have been equipped with in recent years, rated to provide up to 50% charge within 30 minutes. Now let's go over our range of wired and wireless charging solutions for this video. Starting of course with the standard 18 watt adapter, the 87 watt power adapter from my MacBook Pro, as well as the iPad Pro, which conveniently allows for power delivery to your iPhone or other accessories via USB-C. Although each of these wired charging solutions utilize the latest standard of USB-C to lightning connectivity. We will also be testing wireless charging using my favorite charging pad at the moment from EasyAct that I covered in a recent video that I'll also link in the video description for those interested. It can allow for power delivery at 5 watts or 7.5 watts, which is the current max for all iPhones with wireless charging capability. For 5 watt power delivery, typical wireless chargers require an input of 5 volts at 2 amps or 10 watts total to provide sufficient power while 7.5 watts requires 9 volts at 2 amps, or 18 watts of input. So be sure you're using an adequate adapter if your wireless charger didn't come with one in the box so that you're getting the most out of it. In order to conduct these tests under the same conditions, I began each charging session at the first low battery notification of 20% remaining, and placed the iPhone into airplane mode to exclude inconsistencies from notifications or any incoming or outgoing Wi-Fi and cellular signals. Then, with each charging solution, I recorded time points at interval battery percentages until the battery reached a safe charging capacity of 95%. Now with all of that in mind, let's go over the results. Starting with the standard 18 watt power adapter, we see a fairly linear onset, reaching 50% charge in just over 20 minutes, with our full curve rounding out at 102 minutes to reach 95% charge. For the higher wattage adapter, we get a similar fast charge onset to reach 50% charge. But the total charging time overall actually comes in shorter than the 18 watt adapter at only 80 minutes, shaving off 22 minutes overall. The iPad Pro on the other hand, shows a slower charging onset, reaching 50% charge in about twice as long, while coming in at 138 minutes total. Not too bad if it's your only option however. Comparing all three wired solutions, we see the 18 watt and 87 watt adapters provide a similar fast charging response, though the higher wattage does shave off some time overall, while the iPad Pro clearly is not capable of providing fast charging for the iPhone. Now onto our wireless options, starting with the 5 watt output. Here we can see quite a drag in charging time with a fairly linear response throughout, getting to 50% in just shy of 80 minutes while a 95% charge takes a whopping 200 minutes total. Switching over to the 7.5 watts does provide a noticeable improvement, reaching 50% charge in under an hour, with an overall charging time of 152 minutes. Comparing both our wireless options for the iPhone, we can see that the 7.5 watt is certainly worthwhile across the entire charging profile, shaving about 20 minutes off a 50% charge and nearly 50 minutes overall. These charging options are more suited to leaving your phone idle, however, to charge when not in use. If we put all our curves together, we can see there are three distinct zones of charging profiles. 
The first being our fast charging wired options at 18 watts and 87 watts, providing the quickest initial and overall charging times. Second, we have the iPad Pro and the 7.5 watt wireless charger, which show comparable onset charging times, deviating only within about 14 minutes at a 95% charge. This implies the iPad likely provides about 10 watts of charging power to the iPhone. And finally, that leaves our 5 watt wireless charging option as our worst charging solution. This isn't surprising considering it has the lowest power rating, cementing the fact that it should really only be considered for convenience when no other options are available. So here's our final lineup of charging times, with the 5 watt wireless charger coming in at 3 hours 20 minutes on the high end, while our 87 watt wired adapter comes in at an hour and 20 minutes on the low end, giving us an overall spread of 2 hours difference between our best and worst options which is more than enough time to charge the iPhone all over with the fast charging solutions. While these times are for the iPhone 11 Pro Max, its battery capacity compared to that of the standard iPhone 11 Pro is about 23% higher, so expect overall charging times to shorten by at least 10 to 20%, depending on the charging solution you choose. Though fast charging times up to 50% charge should be on par for both devices. If you really need to shave off charging time, consider using your higher wattage adapters from your laptop if you have one, as the iPhone can handle these higher wattages. But I can't see it being worth the extra cost if you need to buy one. These higher wattage adapters seem to be able to provide an overall quicker charge than the standard 18 watt adapter, likely due to their ability to access higher voltages at the same 3 amps or higher output. On the other hand, if you have the time to spare and are just looking for a drop and go charging solution, definitely be sure your wireless charger supports up to 7.5 watts output and that you have a high enough wattage adapter to provide sufficient power. Otherwise, you could just pick up a wireless charger with the proper adapter already included. I hope you found this charging analysis helpful in deciding which charging solution is best for you and your iPhone. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below on which charger you prefer. Feel free to drop a like if you enjoyed this video while you're there, and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss future tech videos coming soon to this channel. Until next time, I'm Sean X Tech.